How's it going everybody? Today I'm going to be showing you a quick tutorial on how to create a handrail, particularly for use in Skater XL map design. And this is the medium burnt technique. It's the wireframing technique. It is different from Enox's curve technique. And in my opinion, it's, it's a little better. I prefer it personally. So we're going to pop into Blender. And as you can see, we have an empty scene here. And I'm just going to go ahead and press Shift A, spawn in a mesh. Plane. Now I'm going to go ahead and rotate my plane along the x-axis by 90 degrees. And I'm going to go ahead and press tab to go into edit mode. And I'm going to press 2 to do edge select. And I'm going to grab this bottom edge I'm going to move it up by 1 meter. Because I know that my plane is 2 meters total and I want it to be even with the axis base. The next thing I'm going to do is make the height of my plane a good height for objects in Skater XL. 0.6 meters is excellent for low pop rails. Uh, actually, we'll maybe make it 0.5. I like that. And we're just going to go into our rail here. It's pretty short. It's only 2 meters long, just 6 feet. So we could up it. Maybe we'll do that. We'll press X to scale and X to scale along the X axis. Going to make it twice as long. So now we have a 4 meter long by 0.5 meter tall plane. And if I hit Control A, that will apply transformations. I'm gonna hit all transforms. And this is very important for other things like UV unwrapping, applying modifiers, all sorts of stuff. Even just doing an inset, it's all affected by the scale. And I've set my scale, if you look, from two and uh, 0.5 back to one, 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 which is exactly what we want. Okay, so we press tab, edit mode, we're back in our object. Control and R, create an edge loop on this plane. I'm going to scroll and I'm going to create more edge loops by scrolling with my middle mouse wheel. We're just going to spawn in, there we go, four edge loops. Each of these lines will represent a leg of my rail. Everywhere there's a line, rail will be generated essentially. So we can press tab, go back to object mode, go to our wrench here on this toolbar, which is the add modifiers. I'm going to add two modifiers. I'm going to start by adding a wireframe. As you can see, this creates a three object only along the wireframe of my original object so our mesh is only where the wireframe was which is what your edges are and i'm gonna add another modifier and this is going to be the bevel modifier okay so we're kind of getting somewhere and i can go ahead and play with these numbers but that's not quite what we want right it's got this weird trough shape we're gonna go ahead and check the boundary box boom it's re it is restricted to the boundaries of its original plane shape and now we can kind of uh, go and play with these boxes to get a feel for what all of these settings do. This is just something that you can do on your own. Personally, I like this look right now. And then the next thing we can do is scroll down to our bevel effect. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to create a square stock rail without these angles here. We're gonna go limit method, set that to angle, and we're gonna dial our angle up to about anything past 60 I think usually fixes that so we'll leave it at 61 okay so we've got this is a perfect square stock rail actually and that's a great start right so the next thing we can do is figure out how to turn it into a round rail that's quite simple we come up here to our bevel and we just change the amount of segments uh, you usually don't need a lot of segments to get a good round rail look five is decent even two or three can Get you where you want as you can see two segments kind of gets us where we want once we do the shade smooth and we can come down here to our um, context click on the normals drop down check the auto smooth box and change the angle that it smooths this is choosing what angle it's smoothing but as you can see it's creating some weird light effects so i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna up the amount of segments and that fixes it a little bit but you can play around with all these settings and you know get comfortable with what you like about this I hope this has helped you guys this is my new favorite way to create a rail Enox's technique definitely still holds a lot of value for certain things but for for most general applications I should say this is a better technique in my opinion because you can hmm, that's a little weird so yeah, that takes a little playing with. There's definitely some weird stuff. I wish I hadn't done that. 
Ah, the relative thickness. Okay, well, that was interesting. We both learned a little bit right there. But yeah, play with these settings. That's important. Um, as you can see, even I don't know everything about all of these settings. But uh, fidget with all these checkboxes and all of this stuff and see what it does. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what you'd like to see in the next tutorial. And I hope that I helped somebody out with this today. Have a great rest of your day.